In this video, I'm going to count down the six worst whys for the show Married at First Sight based on the first 15 seasons. Plus, I will give a shout out to a few honorable mentions at the end. Oh, and keep in mind, just because these women may have the bad wife title doesn't mean I'm saying that their husbands were Captain America or James Bond. They were flawed too. Let's count them down. Coming in at number six, Christina from season 11, New Orleans. Christina was paired with Mild Manor Henry. This was an opposite attract match that this show loves to experiment with. Henry appeared to be a shy, awkward introvert who probably had no business being on the show, while Christina was outgoing and painfully blunt. Christina did not handle his personality or lack thereof very well. She openly criticized him for not being a take charge type of man, but in his defense, she was pouring her fair share of masculine energy into the relationship that did make it easier for him to be the pants wearer in the marriage. She also said that a man who lacked confidence was a deal breaker for her, which was her passive aggressive way of telling her husband that he had low self-esteem. Now, as much as she rolled her eyes, snapped back at him, and seemed constantly annoyed by his mere presence, she thought that he should initiate sex and openly complained that he wasn't. Christina also didn't hold back on the production crew, calling them dumb and ridiculous. Her rudeness towards the crew and bitchiness towards him was a turnoff to Henry, which made her impatient demands for intimacy even more difficult for him to navigate. Christina accused Henry of being two-faced because he'd tell her one thing and then tell everyone else something different. She accused him of doing this because he was trying not to look like the bad guy. So she said, if you're just trying not to look like an a-hole on camera, I'll be an a-hole. I'll be the biggest effing a-hole you've ever seen in your entire life. Yeah, way to create a nice space for your husband to pour his heart out and make it easy for him to initiate making love to you. Towards the end of their marriage, Christina claimed that she received a mysterious text message stating that Henry was gay and dating a man. She refused to share the text message, claiming that she couldn't because her phone automatically deletes text messages every 30 seconds. Oh man, don't you just hate it when you forget to disable the auto-delete text messaging function on your phone? Yeah, that's not a thing. Number five, Morgan from season 15, San Diego. Morgan and Ben were a questionable match from the beginning because Ben for sure wanted kids and Morgan was kind of like, meh, when it came to kids. So that alone should have stopped the experts from matching them. Anyway, on their honeymoon, Morgan confessed that she lied about her education level on her Married to First Sight application. Ben took that information and ran with it. He accused her of not really being a nurse, then skipped over to his castmate Justin to spill Morgan's tea. That move right there set Morgan off for the remainder of their short-lived relationship and she never let him live it down. She forbid him from talking to Justin about their relationship. He agreed, but continued to do it anyway. Now Ben was wrong for doing that, but Morgan's rage never seemed to have fit the crime. Now part of her rage towards him is that he didn't seem to know just how bad he made her feel. And she wasn't satisfied unless he felt it too, like Kathy Bates in the movie Misery type of way. I mean, she was behaving as if Ben spit in her mother's face, then threw chocolate banana berry protein powder on it. She was mad mad. She yelled at him and accused him of not having her back or giving her a proper apology. All the while, we witnessed him giving her genuine heartfelt apologies on camera. But she was also guilty of discussing her relationship with other castmates, which is how she learned that he was still talking to Justin. Morgan preached to Ben that he needed therapy, but never seemed to acknowledge that she could use a little too, given that every time she got upset, she chose rage and could not seem to bring herself to give him just a little bit of grace. In the end, they called it quits early before decision day. This feels like a good time to tell you about the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. If you're short on time like me, but big on flavor and easy on effort, then their quick and easy meals are a fast and a yummy solution. This time they sent me their sizzling hoisin shrimp 
Hey Honey Salmon, and Pork Sausage Rigatoni in a Creamy Sauce. Each of these meals were delivered right to my front door in pre-portioned ingredients with easy to follow recipes. And if you're concerned about your waistline, they have 20% fewer calories than takeout. For fun, I went to my bestie's house and we prepared all three meals. All we had to do was chop up some ingredients, add some seasonings, and either cook them in the oven or on the stove top. I always feel like I should be on the Food Network when I prepare their meals because you can't tell me that I'm not a fancy chef. Just look at this. And it even tastes better than it looks. So you know I didn't tip you with all of this yumminess without having an awesome discount for you. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code 21 Tamara for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's right. You don't have to spend a dime. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use code 21 Tamara. You'll get 21 free meals plus free shipping. Bon appetit. Now coming in at Worst Wife number four, Samantha from season three, Atlanta. Samantha was paired with Neil, who was quirky but kind. Samantha was painfully honest about not being attracted to Neil. On their wedding night to the confessional cam, she vowed to never consummate their marriage or any day after because she wasn't attracted to him. Later on the night of their wedding, Neil tried to lighten the mood by wearing an adult onesie. Unfortunately, Samantha didn't see the humor freaked out and said he looked like an awkward baby, then rudely asked if he brought a pacifier too. Now, at first, Neil seemed oblivious to Samantha's deep lack of interest in him. So before they went to their honeymoon, Samantha bluntly told him that she wasn't attracted to him. She regularly rolled her eyes and made rude faces when he spoke and while she was talking to him, she accused him of not being masculine and was pretty reckless with her words and how she presented herself to Neil. But over time, she grew to like him and eventually fell for him. She finally saw what most of us did, which is that he was a genuine and kind person who didn't deserve her high school mean girl antics. This was a turning point in their marriage. Samantha's demeanor towards him completely changed. She apologized and they seemed to get along. By the time decision day rolled around, she was fully committed to the marriage and said a yes to staying married. Unfortunately, she had done too much damage in the beginning, so Neil said no. Samantha was devastated, but after subjecting him to so much rudeness, who could blame him? Number three, Molly from season six, Boston. Molly and Jonathan did hit it off in the beginning. They had similar senses of humor, hobbies, and life goals. There was just one big glaring problem. Molly was not at all attracted to him. She confessed that she didn't want to be physically intimate with him because she was waiting for attraction to grow. And to add a little salt to the wound, she openly admitted to her new husband that she had one night stands and casual relationships with no problem. So no matter how many things they discovered they had in common, Molly straight up friend zoned him. Throughout the season, they had disagreements where Molly would have emotional outbursts and unfortunately, John was on the receiving end. She hated him. She called him a man child and basically talked to him like he was trash. However, Molly didn't seem to see it that way. It's not clear whether she was in denial or just lying about it. So John struggled with the fact that several weeks in, all of the other couples consummated their marriage and they were nowhere close. But he said what was worse is how cold she was towards him when the cameras weren't rolling. So the show sent the cast to Florida for a getaway. John and Molly seemed to have a good time. However, after filming, they went to a bar where Molly ignored John while she got her flirt on with another guy. That night, they had a big blow up fight about it. Still, cameras weren't rolling, but later they met with expert Dr. Jessica. Now she's another interesting story that I won't get into now, but anyway, they talked to Dr. Jessica about the fight and Molly fell hard on her victim's sword. She accused John of saying, quote, nasty things to her. John denied it and said she was the one who was being rude, which she denied. Well, little did she know, John recorded their fight and had already played it for Dr. Jessica. The good doc asked John to play the video for Molly. In the video, Molly was cussing him out and calling him effing disgusting. 
To everyone's surprise, Molly's response to the video was like, and? She said, what is this supposed to show me? Then got mad at John for betraying her trust by recording her rampage. Yeah, somehow she flipped that situation to make herself the victim. In the end, no one batted an eye when they said no on decision day. Worst wife number two, Katie from season 10, Washington, D.C. Katie was paired with sweet Derek. Like so many, these two started off okay until they weren't. Katie had a bad temper, a short fuse with some sprinkle of jealousy on top. When Derek playfully told her that he had dreams of composing a Christmas song, building giant connecting tree houses, backpacking through eight countries and across different continents, Katie spit on his dreams. He knew his dreams were a little silly, but there are no rules when it comes to dreams. She fought him tooth and nail because she wanted someone whose focus was on her and having kids and accused him of being childish. Now, speaking of accusations, during a group getaway with the cast, she wrongfully accused him of flirting with Taylor, Brandon's wife, and threw a fit that pretty much ruined their little getaway. In the meantime, prior to getting married, she was in a loving relationship with her ex and didn't seem to be quite over him, as she would speak about him just a little too much and in a I'm missing him and wish he was here type of way. Now, oddly enough, they agreed to stay married on decision day, but when the reunion rolled around, these two were bitter. Katie accused Derek of never initiating sex and called him fake. And Derek accused her of hooking up with her ex two times during their marriage. Once after their honeymoon, multiple cast members told him about this one. And then again, about two weeks after decision day. Later, it was revealed that Katie threatened Derek about revealing information about this affair on TV. But she admitted to having a, quote, slip up after decision day. Oh, I've been there, Katie. Accidentally slipping and falling on a man's pixie stick. Hate it when that happens. In any case, she did deny hooking up with him around the honeymoon. But that wasn't all. Katie was also accused of having a little fling with her castmate, Zach, after the season ended. They admitted to getting together for drinks. Katie claims they got together before she saw the show and how badly Zach treated Mindy and that she wouldn't want to be with someone like that. She claims nothing else happened between the two of them. And coming in at number one as the worst wife in 15 seasons of Married at First Sight, Alyssa from season 14, Boston. Alyssa was paired with Chris. Now, unlike many couples, they did not hit it off in the beginning. Alyssa was not attracted to Chris. From night one, Alyssa's opinion of him was formed and it wasn't a good one. She was done. The only problem was the bulk of her opinion was based on Chris's own dorky friends who painted a horribly unflattering picture of Chris to Alyssa. From that point on, Chris was hit with a barrage of accusations from Alyssa. She accused him of being rude, disrespectful, and treating her disgusting. Only thing is, she was projecting. She was the one being rude and disrespectful. She was gaslighting him. But if you asked her, she would tell you that she's a good person, which became her mantra for her stint on the show. Production seemed to take pleasure in sneaking footage of her when she thought cameras weren't rolling, and they captured her wailing at them. One time she said this about Chris, who's a realtor. He comes across as a good guy. But guess what? He's just a itty car salesman who sells houses. She also expressed concern that she wasn't going to come off in a good light when the show aired. She told production, I'm a good person and if I don't come across that way in the show, I'm going to be effing pissed. One time she spotted Chris from a distance just pointing at a building or something and simply swinging his arms by his side, kind of like a kid waiting for his turn to order ice cream. She calls these hand movements so aggressive. Throughout their little marriage, she refused to stay in the same hotel room with them on their wedding night and honeymoon. The Monday when the couples go to the courthouse to make their marriages official, she was on the phone with her lawyer unsuccessfully trying to get out of her contract with the show. 
It's rumored that she threw a fit on the airplane on the way to their honeymoon because she was refusing to sit next to her new husband. So the producer had to sit between them. She regularly, tearfully blasted him for being rude and disrespectful towards her when all of the while he was being abnormally calm and hopeful, still thinking he had a chance. Talk about not being able to read the room. Still all along, she declared that she's a good person. After torturing Chris with her pissy attitude for their five-day honeymoon, she wanted to continue on with the experiment, move into their shared apartment, but not to live together and work on her marriage. No, 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 no. She wanted to split their time in the apartment, living there separately so that she could hang out with her new girlfriends, the other wives. Finally, when Chris called off the marriage early, she boo-hooed, crying, but not because their marriage was over, but because she wasn't going to get to have the experience of living in the apartment and taking part in the experience with her new friend, pretty much all of the cast, but Chris. In the very end, her final message to us all, I'm a good person. In the 15 seasons of this show, no man, woman, or child has come close to Alyssa's behavior during her season. For now, I believe she is the undisputed winner of the Worst Wife Award for the U.S. version of Married at First Sight. Now, there are a handful of wives that deserve an honorable mention for their antics on the show as well. Season 10's Taylor for posting a video on her Instagram during the experiment asking why it's so hard to find a man who's over 6'3", has a job, never been to jail, and not gay. Season 12, Virginia for wanting to hold on to her party girl life and still go out to drink and expecting to crash on her male friend's couches when she's too drunk to drive home. Michaela for choosing chaos when she and her husband fought. However, she kind of gets a pass since it came out later that he was allegedly sleeping around during the season and afterwards when he was supposed to be working on his marriage. Season four is Jasmine for insisting that her new husband pays all of the bills and supports her in a traditional way, while at the same time standing on her strong woman throne of not being a traditional wife who values cooking and being a homemaker. Season 12, Haley, for coming across as being above her husband Jacob and his love for the 80s, turning her nose up at his clothing choices, even buying him shirts she found more appealing. Initially, she was physically attracted to him, but after having sex with him, she let it be known that the sex was bad and gave the impression that Jacob needed to do all the work in the marriage while she simply coasted into decision day. So what do you think? Did any of your picks not make the list? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video.